Hey guys, it's Ryan Bridge Bugman, and we are at Ward Pound Ridge Reserve in New York. And look, we're kicking off Moth Week a little bit early. We're gonna run some lights in the reserve tonight. We got special permission to use the building, use the electricity, and we're gonna run a bunch of lights. We're gonna take you through the process of setting up this, this setup. We're gonna take you through the process of why we decided to do it here, why we decided to do it this way, and then we're gonna take you through the equipment as we set things up. So stay with us. This is gonna be a ton of cool bug fun. All right, so step one is to get the sheets in position, and we're good there. Step two, figure out how we wanna hang lights. In this case, we're using a windowsill. We don't really have the ability to hang lights. So I decided to go with a tower. I use this system and a lot of other setups. It works great. It allows me to clamp lights anywhere I want, as much light as I wanna put on this thing. We're gonna light this, this air up like an airport by the time we're done. So first step, we're going with a tower. That helps me get lights up off the ground, shoots it into the sky, shoots it down onto the sheets. All right, so step two. We know we're gonna use mercury vapor. We're also gonna use ultraviolet light. I like to max out the ultraviolet light. The insects are sensitive to that. That's why they come to a bug zapper. It's why they like ultraviolet light. So we wanna max it out. I like to use a de-zapped bug zapper. This used to hang in front of a building. Guess what? Now it's gonna sit on the ground and it's gonna do nothing but attract insects instead. Okay, still in step two, we're still installing more ultraviolet light. This is a BioQuip strip light. It's a 15 watt bulb. These things, this setup, you can buy these for about 50 bucks. Super quick, super simple, lots of UV light. So we're still setting up more UV. This time we're going to the clamp bulbs. These are simple bulbs. They screw in to the clamp sockets. These bulbs can be bought at BioQuip and they sell for about 15 bucks. Nice 20 watt ultraviolet bulbs. Super simple. I'm gonna clamp onto the tower and I can stack as many of these onto the tower as I want. The other thing, we're gonna go with self-ballasted mercury vapor bulbs. These are simple standard base bulbs, clear mercury vapor bulb. They're gonna have none of the big high, you know, heavy ballast, just super simple. This is a 160 watt bulb. So it's not the thousand watt football size things. I like smaller bulbs. I can adjust, I can go more of these to get more power if I want, more light if I want to. At the same time, I can cycle these bulbs throughout the night and it's a lot easier than using the really big ballasted bulbs. Super cool, super affordable. Mercury vapor bulbs put out a ton of light. They also produce a large plume from the top of the bulb. That plume extends far away from the setup and is a huge advantage, but I can explain that later. I always try to keep the UV lights about 10 to 12 inches from the sheet. So the maximum amount of light will reflect. And it's the maximum UV that I'm keying on to calm those insects down and hold them onto the setup. I might actually have a little OCD when it comes to my setups. I'm kind of a control freak about dirt and clutter all over the black light sheets. Simply put, I like a nice, organized, clean looking sheet. That's also gonna help me see all the bugs a whole lot easier. The lower the mercury vapor bulb is positioned, it will cover the ground sheet. Even though that area is already covered with two UV lights, a max out of mercury vapor will only increase the amount of insects attracted to the setup. And a little more clutter control never hurts either. Having power to run the lights is key. So is more light. Make sure you don't overload a fuse box and make sure you have a plan B in case you lose the ability to run your lights. So as perfect as this setup looks, approach every lighting plan with an open mind and expect the unexpected. Maybe you use one or a two light setup and that's great if it works for you. I prefer to go bigger with as many lights as possible. Having the ability to hardwire to a car battery is a nice asset. I also carry a car adapter connection just in case. Generators are never 100% reliable and I've been left in the dark without power. 
even a laundry basket sitting in the ground with a battery operated UV light inside, or better yet, hanging in a tree will still attract insects. No way to hang sheets up, no big deal. Put them on the ground. I do this a lot. I love the flexibility of a generator to get lights into remote places, but have a plan B just in case. Okay, so now you have your lights running. <laughs> it's also now a waiting game. Look, you need to understand that lots of insects fly at dusk and these too can be attracted to your lights. Start your lights early. Get them on around 730. Most of the larger, more popular species will start coming in around 11 p.m. However, insects will start arriving at variable times all night long. So expect things to start out slow and pick up as the night goes along. The longer you run your lights, the more insects will continue to show, unless the weather conditions change for the worse, and we'll talk about that later as well. Now, let's keep in mind there are plenty of insects that will come to lights early. Larger moths, like tulip tree silk moths. Weird stuff, like owl flies. Some of the small sphinx moths, a wide assortment of laziocampids, rosy maple moths, tiger moths, IO moths, and other small noctuids, as well as a variety of beetles, fish flies, maybe even dobson flies. These things will all come to light before 11.30 p.m. Okay, if you remember, I talked about the plume that pushes out from the mercury vapor bulb. Insects will often stay within the plume and never come to the sheets. Not a lot of people consider cycling their mercury vapor lights off for about 10 minutes in order to eliminate that plume and draw those shy insects down onto the setup. Doing this every hour or so will often double the amount of insects at the lights, and I've discovered there's a lot of really nice insects caught up in that plume. So kill the mercury vapor once in a while and bring them down to your setup. One mistake a lot of people make is turning the lights off too early. Expect the 2 a.m. lull. Set an alarm for 4 a.m. and go take a nap because the bugs will come in. Some of the more impressive insects can take longer to show up, so be patient, they will come. Look man, black lighting can be a ton of fun for everyone. A clear sky in the mid 70s and no moon, no moon is the perfect world scenario for black lighting. An overcast sky will also help hold in the heat, so that's not a bad thing either. But bad weather will be a deal breaker. A full moon, wind or rain will shut insect activity down, so be prepared. I try to have a canopy to cover the setup just in case it rains. Insects will fly in a light rain, sometimes in big numbers, so go in prepared and keep the lights on if at all possible. Hey guys, it's Ryan Bridge, the bug man, and I'm in Arizona, and this is black lighting. What you're looking at are thousands and thousands of moths and insects. And they come to these lights that we put up. And this is the cool stuff that you can see when you're black lighting. How amazing is this to see all these awesome insects in one place simply by putting up lights. Again. Ryan Bridge the bug man and we're black lighting in Arizona.
How cool is that?